Wait for it, chap. You gotta wait for it. The boy next door. Chat. How's it going, chat? Fucking hell, that. Every time. Every time I do like a little dance at the beginning of the stream. I get so <laughs> I literally cannot. I, I've, I've got a stitch. That's how unfit I am. I've got a stitch. Which can't have me. Anyways, chat. I hope we're doing good. I hope we're doing slay. Oh my god, I'm so out of breath. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. That really took that one. That one really took. That, that one really took it out of me. God fucking damn. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Because, guess what? I am not the boy next door. But we're growing up with him. But we're growing up with him. But we're growing up with him. Alright? We're having fun. All right. Even though we we have not gotten far in this game like at all, but this is another reason why I brought it back because um we, we just we barely got anywhere with it and I'm like, you know what? We need to oh, don't I I keep looking at my bangs and they look terrible today. It's absolutely like they just look really like you know what I mean? They just look really wet. But they're not wet. You know what I mean? I think it might be because they're getting too long. So I, I'm going to get my hair cut soon, I think. I'm going to get my hair cut soon thing. Um, but yeah, we barely, we've barely gotten far with, with this game. So that's the reason that I brought it back and stuff like that. Why is all of this scuffed up here? Why is that all scuffed? Should we try and sort that out, chat? Should we try and sort that fucking out? Why does it look like that? Why? Why? Oh, I think I know why. Ah, because I moved it all like this. There we go. There we go. Slay. We, 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 we're back to normal. We're back to normal. Anyways, chat, we're going to be playing some Our Life today. Um, if you don't know what Our Life is, it is a dating simulator. But at the moment, there's no dating involved because we are my character and the character that we're supposed to be growing up with, which is the boy next door. Um, Jesus Christ um we're, we're both children at the moment um so we're like building the friendships it's pretty cute you get to like kind of choose what you say and choose what you do i like it i think it's cute i, I love the um the what's it called the, the the art style it's completely free on steam so i mean there's dlcs that we're not going to look into because they cost money um which is fine for enough which is fine um but you know but you know, so yeah, we're gonna be playing that today, chat. Um, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fresh. Um, it is gonna be a shorter stream though today because <laughs> you wanna know why? I was gonna do like a two-hour stream, right? I was thinking yesterday that I'd do a two-hour stream because I could do our life for about an hour and then Minecraft for another hour. You know, like the. Why does my fucking webcam do that? That is so freaky. Anyways, um what's it called uh, uh uh yeah i was gonna do a half and half stream um but um my dad wants to go see ant man i've already seen it but my dad wants to watch it so uh that's what we're doing um and you know it's a two hour long film so <laughs> i've gotta i've i've gotta be off in time to not like drive us into the middle of the night um but yeah so but i i i don't think it's too bad to have a bit of a short stream okay i am a bit tired um, we're just gonna be chilling, you know, I need to turn on my fan because I'm boiling fucking hot This jumper, I swear to fucking god, Bilzo's hoodie makes me so fucking hot like his merch makes me so fucking warm It's crazy Like it was perfect like when I got it because I got it in um, Like oh my god that fan feels so much better um, But I got it in like October like when I came home from Brighton and literally it kept me warm throughout majority of winter it's so fucking good someone asked me on tiktok where i got it from and i was like i got it from bilzo but like you know i think they're all sorted out sorry 
And I don't know, I kind of, I, I kind of do like a little giggle to myself and I'm like, tee hee, tee hee, I'm one of the only people that have it. Obviously I'm not the only. I know many other people have got it, including obviously Bill's and his friends. Um, I'm trying to sort out this fucking thing. There we go. Um, but, you know, it's limited edition. I got his first merch drop. Like that, I don't know. All right, listen, it's fine. Listen, it's fine. We'll get on, we'll get on to the stream. Let me pause the music. Because, because we have, you smell A! Ah, I know I look like a rat, but go down. Thank you for the hydrate though. Thank you for the hydrate. I've just been saying that I've got Bilzo's um, limited edition merch without realizing. <laughs> so, but anyways, yes, let's get onto the game. We're playing a dating simulator. But obviously at the moment there's no dating involved because we're children so rocky so hell yeah hell yeah i mean it's flipped but i promise you it does say bill though i promise you also i didn't realize that in the middle there's like numbers here and that's his birthday and i didn't even realize i like looked up his birthday at one point and i was like hey up those are the numbers on the jumper and then i was like oh okay slay so hey anyways let's let's actually play the game Let's actually, where, where's the uh, thingy gone? Where's the, uh... there we go. Now you can hear the music. Uh, I'm wearing Eminem merch. I don't know why my brother has Eminem merch. Or oh, well, I guess I have it because I stole the hoodie. I wish I had Eminem merch. I listen to Eminem. Can I have it? <laughs> can I have it please? Can I have it? I like Eminem. Anyways, we have done Firefly Sandcastle on Long Day. Don't remember what happened. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I know on one of them, uh, we caught fireflies, <laughs> believe it or not, and we built a sandcastle and we had a long day. Um, so you know, we've got two more to do and then summer ends and then I think we grow up an age or grow up a year or whatever. Um, I'll bring it with me when I visit Brighton, then you can have it, then you can show me the stone beach. The stone beach is great, especially if you like collecting things. You can find cool rocks, you can find cool rocks, I still have a matching cow rock from, from when me and James went. Anyways, this is, this is, this is, this is, uh, what's his name again? <laughs> uh, this is the boy next door, basically, that we grow up with. Um, Cove. Okay, his name's Cove. Remembering now. Uh, one sweltering summer day, you were in your living room with Cove, listening to the sounds of the birds chattering outside the window while you lay across the rug on the floor. By the way, there is a lot of reading in this. Um, so I will stutter a lot, but just fucking shut the fuck up and let me, let me do my shit. Uh, airport security when I go home, why the fuck is your bag so heavy? Why is your suitcase filled with rocks? Can you bring rocks with you? Like a bunch of rocks? Like, fine, fair enough, a few. But can you bring like a whole suitcase of rocks? I mean, I, I, I guess you I guess you can only go so far with filling your suitcase up with rocks because obviously the weight limit. But I wonder if you'd get away with that. Because I, I guess it could be classed as a weapon if you try hard enough. You can stone someone. <laughs> you can stone someone. So I, I don't know if it would be allowed, you know? I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. Anyways. Co's dad had dropped him off earlier and your mum's had left you two Oh yeah we have lesbian mums. I totally forgot about that. And your mum's had left two of you along with Lizzie to play amongst yourselves. I think Lizzie's our sister, I believe. Uh, I'm just gonna fill my pockets with rocks. As you should. As you should. That's what I did with my tote bag. I just fucking started putting rocks in them. Um it had been too hot to go outside in the afternoon, at least according to your according to your mum. So your sister was starting to get impatient, waiting for her golf class that evening. Golf class? Fucking hell, what are we Tories? What the fuck? They're gonna be like, what did you have in your pants? <laughs> Wait, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be going through uh, the metal detector looking like my pants is scrunchies filled with nuts. <laughs> and I'll be like, ask me out for a drink first. <laughs> I actually hate going through the metal detectors. I hate it. I fucking despise this shit, that shit. Like, I hate it so much. I hate it. Uh, the three of you had a trouble finding something fun to do. Um, airports give me so much anxiety. Same, same. Even though I want to travel quite a lot, but you know what? It'll be worth it. <laughs> 
The three of you had trouble finding something fun to do. The beach and the playground were off limits and you felt like it was too warm for anything like playing with your fuzzy toy animals. Then suddenly, uh, a light came to Lizzie's big brown eyes and her smile spread wi wide across her face. I've been going through the metal detector like, oh god, what if I have a bomb inside of me and I just don't know? Yeah, literally, I'm like, what if they know I'm carrying something when I'm not carrying something? I'm like, what if I get caught? But I, why would I get caught? I don't have anything. Like, <laughs> what? Like, literally fucking what? Uh, having an idea gave her a new wave of energy. This is our sister. This is our sister. She's like sassy. She's like the mean one, but she's all right. You know what I mean? Uh, it's the same when I walk out of a grocery store without buying anything. <laughs> Fine, fair enough. I, bro, I get the urge to steal. Is that just me? I won't ever actually steal, but I do get the urge to just be like, what if I just take this? Like, what if I just take it? You know what I mean? My anxiety would be like, what if I accidentally put something in my pocket and I just forgot as if I would ever do that? See, I wouldn't ever do it, but I feel like I get the urge to. I get the urge. Is that, that might just be a me problem. <laughs> Since we're stuck inside, we should be adults. They don't play outdoors anyways. They're always inside telling everybody they're too busy to play. Why? Why? Yeah. I said why and it'll be fun. Duh. <laughs> what did they do inside that we don't? Besides besides use the phone a lot. Excluding a small hub, Lizzie decides to ignore Cove. She is so mean to fucking Cove and it makes me sad. Like, what has Cove ever done to you? Like, bro. What do you uh, Maraki, what do you think? Do you want to? Ah, uh, sure. Um, yeah, I want to. Sure, you do? Seriously? Yeah. Hooray! Okay, let me think. What do I want to be? Thank you for the luck, by the way. Uh, I'm finishing my homework real quick and then I'll be back. That is a-okay. That is a-okay. Um, satisfied that neither of you were about to bail on her, Lizzie thought over, uh, over her options while she watched. After a few seconds, she clapped her hands together and beamed, apparently having settled on something without asking either of you. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna be a professional golfer, Meraki. Why would you be? Okay, you know what? Fine. Meraki, you and Cove can be... A beach volleyball player, a gymnast, or a tennis player. Why? Why? Can't I be a fucking, like, horse or some shit? I want to be a horse. <laughs> Why can't we pick anything we want? That's exactly what I've been saying. That's exactly what I've been saying. Because I have a fun idea. That's why. And we have to play sports as adults. Yep. But there's other kind of sports too. Right? It isn't the same. What do you think, Maraki? Don't those choices sound super cool? You want to be that, huh? Isn't there anything else we can be? Lizzie stopped a foot on the ground. Nope, come on, just decide already. No, Lizzie wouldn't let this go anytime soon, you sighed. Kurt was not impressed with Lizzie's attitude, though he didn't bother talking more about it for now. He thought over the list of possibilities, beach, volleyball, gymnasts, or tennis. Out of all of them, he preferred to play... Now me personally, because I've been playing at the standpoint of what I choose to do, um, out of all of them probably tennis i'm not flexible i have the crackiest of snappiest of just fucking shit bones in my life so if i do a cartwheel my back will snap in half motherfucker so gymnastics is not a good option beach volleyball i would i do i have played volleyball and i have enjoyed it but i get so scared by the ball <laughs> Like, I'm I'm one of those kids that have been traumatised by ball sports. Not like tennis or badminton. Well, badminton's not really a ball, but... Like, not like tennis balls or anything. But like, dodgeball, football, volleyball. I've all been in awful fucking pain when playing them. It's like, volleyball, straight to the face. Dodgeball, straight to the face. Football, right in the stomach. I'm winded, I'm on the floor. And I was literally, what, like, eight years old? Fucking seven? I was literally in primary school and someone- I was in goal for some reason. Why would you put the tiniest person in goal? Like, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm late. Have I missed Mr. Holden? You haven't! You haven't, don't worry. You have not- It's unplugged. It's unplugged. No! Ah! Shut up! There you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. We're just discussing our options. And I was telling the story about um, how in primary school they put me in a goal goalkeeper, like as goalkeeper, 
um, for some reason. I think they didn't want me to play, so they're like, we'll shove her on goal. Um, and then when I tried catching the ball, I literally threw my whole body into the ball and then got winded and I literally died on the floor. And I remember like all my friends like hovering over me like, what the fuck happened? And I'm like, I died. That's what happened. Because yes, so God, I haven't missed my husband. You haven't missed him. You haven't missed him. Um, right, yeah, tennis. I'm, I'm actually okay at tennis. I'm not the best, but I'm, I'm okay at it. I'm pretty good at badminton. I'm I'm pretty good at badminton, not gonna lie. I, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Uh, you remembered uh, mum had a couple of t old tennis rackets lying around somewhere, but you forgot where you had last seen them last. You could check the attic for them, although Lizzie probably wouldn't let you run off and, uh, and do that now she has you here. Yes, that was clearly the top option. I guess I'll be a tennis player. All right. All right. How about you, Cove? I picked volleyball. I f yeah, I fucking would have guessed you chose volleyball, mate. Okay, so Maraki, you're a famous tennis player, and Cove, you're on a popular beach volleyball team, and this is Ponytail Bob's when she proudly stretch her arms wide. Hello, M. Oh my god, Maraki. Oh my god, Newton. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. We're Olympic athletes. Why are we Olympic? Do I look like an Olympic athlete? I just danced at the beginning of the stream and fucking got a stitch for dancing for a minute. Bro, I'm not going to be an Olympic athlete. Yes, Cove, good son. <laughs> good son, good son. Hey, how are you doing, by the way, chat? How are you doing? How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing, I'm doing pretty slow. Especially now that I've turned my fan on because I was way too hot. <clears throat> I was way too hot. Cove didn't seem at all impressed with the announcement. He made, uh, he made a face and adjusted the glasses on his nose. That's really specific. Uh, that's what makes it fun anyway. Uh, I'm doing okay, okay. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. Um, let's see much back and forth. You'll do better once you see Mr. Holden. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. You'll do You'll do a 10 out of 10 as soon as you see the man. Uh, let's see much back and forth in front of both of you. Getting lost in her own imagination. I want all gold medals and people are calling me the next Mickey Wright. Who? Who? Who the fuck is... Oh, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Mickey. Hey, Mickey. Um, who's that? Exactly. Exactly. I don't know who that is either. Koki stopped side-eyeing Lizzie, just a thought. To be honest, she's been a bit of a bitch right now. Uh, Lizzie stopped on the stopped on the spot and turned to him, her brown eyes shining with impatience. It doesn't matter if you know who she is. It's a golf thing. You guys won medals too. Kofi, your team was bronze. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's that's a fucking bruh, bruh. And Maraki, you barely miss out on the gold and got silver. It's more real if we're not all first place. Fucking hell, that's so mean. <laughs> Poor Cove. Uh, silver sucks. I don't want silver. I like silver. All right, it looks good on me. I'm okay with that. Hey, we could do better than silver. Silver's not bad. Nice. Stay silent. I'm okay with that. You should your shoulders agreeing with Lizzie. A silver medal was still really good in the Olympics. Go side eye her even more. Look at it, there you go, he listened. I'm not. Co folded his arms across his chest, apparently not as happy as you were with the decision. Well, I wouldn't be if someone told me I'd get a bronze in volleyball, even though I probably would. I probably would. Also, people lose at the Olympics. Then, then, them's the breaks. The, the fuck? Them's the breaks. I have no idea. Then you're the one who did, not me. Lizzie looked taken back by a coast de declaration, as though the thought of her losing was completely absurd. No way, it wouldn't make sense. I'm already practicing my golf game. She took a golfing stance to make her point, pretending to swing her club and, and hit the invisible ball. Is this a The, the Last of Us reference? Um. <laughs> Sorry, so what kind of house do you want to live in? Kovan changed his mind about winning, but thinking about where he'd live as an adult appealed to him, apparently, because he looked back at Lizzie with some some sort of anger fading. I I also like doing that. I also like imagining, like, this sort of apartment that I'll live in, you know. I want, like, a cosy little, like, studio apartment in Brighton. Cove puncher. <laughs> you can't teach your kid violence. You know what? You do you. I'm going to live on the beach. Lizzie made a face at him, poking out her tongue. That's kind of boring. We already have that. How about you shut your ass up? Maybe he wants to stay here. 
No, not uh, no, not like normal houses uh, with a street on it, right on the sand by the water. Just like that, all the tension was back. You haven't even had a chance to choose where you'd want to live. Violence is sometimes the answer. <laughs> maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes, but when they're like two years old. No, they're not. I don't know why they're two years old. They're clearly not. I think we're actually eight in this, but I'm not sure. Eight or ten, something like that. That's not very fun or smart, Cove. You can't live on a bunch of sand and shells. But I want to, and I will. Cove narrowed his eyes at Lizzie, even though she stood half half a head taller than him. You didn't give out a list of things to pick. Uh, wait, you didn't get, give out a list of things to pick from this time. So I'm picking that. Why are we even pretend? Uh, why are we even playing pretend if we can't imagine anything? Jeez, Rick. Um, where did that come from? Who? Where did? What is Jeez, Rick? What? Jeez, Rick, where did that come from? Who? What is that from? What? Where, where did that come from? Cove kicker. <laughs> Bro, that's my sister. <laughs> well, I'm going to live in a mansion far away from here. I'm far away from you. <laughs> One with an indoor pool and a place to practice my award-winning golfing. That does sound pretty nice, to be fair. It's not How can you are yelling about mine when your idea is even more impossible? Oh. Lucy's face flushed spread her hands balling into fists out of size. It is not impossible, and it's better than yours. Disagreement always seemed to crop up when the two of them were together, and you always felt like you were stuck in the middle. Rocky, let's be real, your sister is a bully. She is a bully, but it's still my sister. You know? <laughs> if I let Co punch my sister, my mums are gonna come back, and she's gonna tell on me. She's gonna tell on me, and then I'm gonna have to deal with that. Bro. Um... Maybe when they get older. No, I think that's a bit more of a problem when they get older. <laughs> Maybe, and yes, still my son. That is true. Maybe just tell him a few curse words and that'll tell to shut up. Uh, but when it came off the topic at hand, this time you thought you prefer a mansion. Being on the beach was cooler. You wanted to agree with Lizzie. Cove was right. You were tired of deciding. I was tired of deciding. You didn't engage with their bickering and said dreamt up of your own dream house. And you weren't going to share your idea with them either. You already knew it was a good one. You can swim whenever you want uh, if you live on the beach. We can still swim anytime we want where we live now. Being a little closer doesn't mean anything. Says you. I, beach house is pretty cool. Beach house is pretty cool. The crabs, not so cool. I just, I feel like a mansion is so idealized. But like, if I was to live in a mansion, I'd shit my pants. Because it's too big of a space. It's way too big of a space. So I feel like I'm, I be, I'm being like broken into if that makes sense i don't know says you the two of them scowled at each other you're being so unreasonable you 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 bitch i don't get what you want <laughs> this game doesn't make sense it does you have to be realistic i said that but you're not you have no idea what to do and to make them stop at this point it seemed like the two of them would just keep working each other up as long as they could nothing is said so far i'd get them from being mad Oh my god. Thankfully, like a, a greeting card angel, mum walked into the room. Hello, mother. Lizzie rushed to her, hanging on to the hem of her shirt, poking out her tongue at Cove. Oh my god. Lizzie, Meraki, it's time to get ready to go. Sorry you have to leave already, Cove. Uh, the mum said she'll walk you home so you won't you won't be left in the cold. Cove was still glaring at Lizzie, his face full shred with anger. I can go by myself. But, bye, bye Meraki. Oh, he says bye to me. <laughs> You're in shit, bro. Uh, there was still a harsh edge to the brief farewell, but you knew it wasn't at you he was mad at. Without giving uh, giving Mum a chance to stop him, Co stood up and sto uh, stalked, stalked. Co stood up and stalked out of the room, his shoulders drawn tight. Okay. Worried, Mum took took turned to look down at you and Lizzie. You two were playing nice with our new friend, weren't you? Should I snitch on my sister? Now, what would I do in this situation? Because I, my, me and my brother, we grew up in two completely different worlds because obviously he was way older and I was like way younger. So we wouldn't really play together unless it was like when I was older, like probably about like 13 and we played Minecraft. Like, I played a little bit with him, like, Call of Duty, even though I was, like, literally 10. But, like, 
we didn't really play with his friends, if that makes sense. And even so, my mum would never come in and be like, where's my husband? Probably at home. I hope so. I hope so. Um, I feel like I'd tell the truth. And kind of be like, well, she was being a bit of a bitch, but it's alright. They were fighting Coven Lizzie for the whole time. Your sister's jaw dropped, <laughs> looking betrayed as mum put both hands on her hips. Elizabeth, the Queen of England, dead. I told you to be kind to him. He's having a hard time right now. Lizzie's mouth closed back up, replaced by a tiny frown. She needs to learn, to be fair, to, to be nicer to him. I know, I tried, but he was... No, nope. no buts, but we, bo uh, we both know you can show someone a great time when you put your mind to it. I'm going to apologise to Cove and his dad. Blue. And his dad over the phone when he gets home from work tonight. Oh, he's at work. He's at work. Don't worry, Blue. He's getting he's getting the dime. He's getting the dollar. Uh, Lizzie hung her head, dragging her foot across the ground in front of her. Okay, Mum. You could- I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. You caught pieces of uh, Lizzie talking to herself about uh, how it was his fault too, but it was over. All right, we better get a move on. Let's let's go, kids. No, no, Nolani. Who the fuck is Nolani? Where did you leave the car keys? Oh, is that our other mum? Mum hustled you uh, all out the door, and you noticed during the car ride, golf uh, golf practice that Lizzie was quieter than usual. She was usually uh, the first one to request music to listen to in the car, but she didn't say a thing. The parents noticed she wasn't in the mood to be bothered. They gave her space, and Mum just asked you uh, what you'd like to listen to. Oh, love joy. <laughs> you picked your favourite song. Uh, it always made the car car ride more fun. It chose the soundtrack to a cool movie you saw a couple months ago. Just a song you knew Lizzie liked. Maybe that would cheer her up. Okay, sure. You were happy to see you brighten her up right away. She started to sing along with you. Soon enough, her bad mood was a thing of the past. When the car ride was over, you spent the twilight hour watching Lizzie hit hit things with other girls her age he's making money to buy me more stuff yeah he is yeah he is uh you didn't know much about golf but you you could tell that she really liked it uh so you sat with your mums and tried to puzzle it out it was nice sitting outside after being cooped up in the house all day you stretched out your legs to let uh let the last few minutes of sun warm your skin <laughs> when the sun was finally out of sight dipping behind the horizon you all got ready to leave we love a working man we do we do Instead of going straight home, your mums took, uh, took the family out to dinner. You went to a restaurant you had all, all been going to ever since you could remember. The whole afternoon had been a bunch of shouts and you hadn't been able to stop. But you could kind of tell that it, uh, all this helped Lizzie be less angry. The car ride home was quiet, with only the radio providing escape from silence. Bro! Fucking, oh my god. Driving home in the dark after a really long day... Oh my god, that shit hits different. Especially when you're a kid and like you fall asleep and your mum carries you in or like one of your parents bring you in. Oh my god. Like I remember when I used to fake being asleep so that my mum could like bring me in. <laughs> well obviously uh, he has to work and spend my life watching Meraki streams. Who's that? Who's that? I've never heard of Meraki streams. I only know myself that's got two S's at the end. Like, I need to stop this bit. I need to stop this bit. Uh, Lucy had been uh, in better spirits now, but the closer you got to your neighbourhood, the more she wriggled in her seat and frowned out the window. She knew what was coming when you all got back home. Oh, the phone call. Clearly, she was dreading it. Soon enough, Mum was turning turning on to... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they reversed again to the driveway. Once she cut the uh, ignition, it was dead silent. No one spoke. Only unbuckled their seatbelts and opened their doors. Lizzie was the last one out. Once everyone's inside and done taking off their shoes, she popped her hands on her hips. So. Now then, Mr. Holden's car is in his driveway, so uh, he should be back from work. That's good news, isn't it, Elizabeth? You and Cove uh, uh, can hash things out before the day's done. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you correcting. Thank you. Lizzie didn't complain, uh, Mr. Holden. Uh, Lizzie didn't complain or put up a fight. Her head ducked so she didn't have to meet anyone's eyes. She nodded once. Good, let's move in, uh, this into the kitchen. Mum went over to, uh, to the house phone. Uh, the rest of you followed behind her. Mum, uh, Mum put a gentle hand on Lizzie's shoulder as they walked side by side. See, this might teach her a lesson though. You know what I mean? This might teach her to say sorry a lot more often. 
Uh, you watched them from the back. This was only happening because you told told on Lizzie. You didn't regret it. You felt a little guilty, like you betrayed your sister. You hadn't liked doing it, but had to. Uh, but it was her fault for doing it in the first place. Had to. Being a, a, a tattletale doesn't feel good, and you uh, wouldn't want someone else to tell your, your mums everything you did. Still, your mum had asked directly, and you wanted to, wanted to be a li liar even less. <laughs> I don't know, I was a big liar when I was a kid. The four of you stood around the kitchen in a lopsided square. All, all eyes were on Lizzie, who kept her gaze on her feet. Hello? Uh, you remember the number for Coast House, don't you, honey? Lizzie jerked her head uh, in another nod, sullen. Without further prompting, she stepped forward and she began to dial. Hello? What is, what is happening? Uh, Mum reached over and pressed a button on the base. Suddenly, you could hear the phone ringing. She turned on the speaker. The phone rang a couple of times and Mr. Holden's warm voice ca came through the other end. Me waiting for my husband. There he is! Oh, I'm in the way. Hold on. Hold on. I'll move my camera. Don't shout at me. There you go. Evening, Holden residents. Evening, Hol Holden's residence. <laughs> okay. uh, Lizzie looked over uh, over at Mum. I'm sure she nodded encouragingly. Hi, Mr. Holden. It's um Lizzie. Can I talk to Co? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Lizzie, what a surprise! But of course, you can't say hey to the to the boy. What? Oh, <laughs> Blue. Uh, it sounded cheery as usual, though definitely meant it uh, when he said he, he it, it was a surprise. You thought hard, and you were sure that your sister had never called Coast House before. Oh my knees. <laughs> Mum spoke up before Mr. Hold and all Lizzie could say anything more. <laughs> her arms were crossed over her chest, her lips pursed. Hi Cliff, uh, uh, Cliff, no, Nolani, Meraki, and I, I, I uh, here too. <laughs> I think I think her name's N N Noali or some shit, because I, I was confused. Uh, good evening. We're sorry to bother you so late. Uh, you spoke up to say hello to. Ah, oh, we know. We know the dad. Hi. <laughs> the gang's all here. Hi. Is something the matter? His voice grew concerned. And Mum was quick to reassure him. Mm. No. Well, yes, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> Uh, Lizzie and Cope got into a bit of a fight today. We were hoping the two of them could talk and make up. Uh, is this a good time for you and Cope? A fight? Cope didn't tell me anything about when I that when I came home. It does explain the funk he's been doing in tonight. He's been in tonight. Funk it down! Won't you take me to funk down? Uh, he chuckled lightly. Despite that, guys, I'm a faceless streamer. I'm a faceless streamer, by the way. Thought, you, thought I'd let you know. Uh, he chuckled lightly despite that. It didn't seem like he really thought it, uh, thought it was that funny. Oh, I fucking can't read. Anyway, it's good you didn't catch us at a bad time. I'll go grab him for you. Okay, I think he's going. I think he's going. Racky, don't blame me. My husband is here. I... Listen, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. It's fine. I don't blame you. Uh, there was shuffling on the other hand. He, he must have not gone far because you could still hear him calling out. Oh my god, I've got fucking like some sort of hair in my eye. God damn. Uh, Cove, there's someone on the phone for you. After a beat of silence, there was more muffled talking from Cove's dad. Come on, bud. Lizzie called just uh, just so she could talk to you. Are you sure? Bracky's on the other end listening too. Don't you want to say hi? It took a bit of a uh, bit of back and forth, though the conversation seemed one-sided since you couldn't hear Cove properly. Eventually, Cove took the phone from his dad. Hi. I know you can't see Cove, but it's fine. Hello? He Hello? It's got me in it! Hello? Uh, hey, it's Lizzie. Yeah, I know, Dad told me. Coast turned his defences. Lizzie turned to turned to Mum, scowling. One stern look from her, though, and Lizzie turned away. Sorry. Sorry! <laughs> what was that? I just called to say, I'm, so I'm sorry for not playing nice with you today. I won't do it again. Lizzie's eyes were downcast, her voice low. You could tell she felt uncomfortable, apologising to Kobe in front of everyone. She was still being genuine about feeling bad. Kurt must have realised that too, because he sighed quietly. Mm. I want gold, and I think Maraki should win too. Really? He thought you were worth gold, even though you hadn't even wanted it? Oh, that's kind of sweet of him. Lizzie was momentarily stunned, silent by, by demand. She probably f forgot that even happened already. Alright, we all win gold. Okay, I guess I'm sorry too. A sense of relief washed over everyone at, at, this, at his acceptance of the apology. Mum uncrossed her arms while Mum's shoulders relaxed. 
Lassie's eyebrows raised up. You wondered if uh, she thought uh, that he'd refuse her apology. Dad, can I get off the phone now? You couldn't see him, but it was obvious that Co felt awkward about the situation. He had to come—he had to come off uncomfortable the entire time, really. Yeah. Yeah, you can go back to your room if you want. Be sure to say goodbye first, though. Um, bye, Lizzie. Bye. Bye. Bye, Meraki. Oh, he smiled when he said bye. I know you can't see her, but he smiled when he said bye to me. You perked up at the mention of your name. You smiled, even if he, even if you couldn't see it. Bye, Co. With that, uh, with that said, Cove must have handed the phone uh, to his dad uh, and left, since Mr. Holder spoke up. Absolutely. Fuck's sake. <laughs> All's well that ends well, as they say. Thanks for arranging this. I'm sure he appreciates it. Hello? As Mum replied, Lizzie tugged on uh, Mum's hand to catch her attention. Can I go now too? Good job. Sure, sweetie. Thank you very much for apologising to Cove. Mum flashed a brief smile at Lizzie and nodded her, uh, her agreement. <laughs> Given permission to leave, Lizzie scurried off towards the stairs. She seemed to be feeling much better uh, with the incident behind her. Mum and Mum returned to the phone, taking it off the speaker. They continued talking to Mr. Holden. Oh, wait, I can have my webcam back. There we go. Uh, you couldn't tell what about. Uh, you were glad that uh, that was the end of it all. Lizzie and Cove might not get along and probably still won't, but they weren't mad at each other anymore. Mum and Mum weren't upset either. Everything was finally back to normal. With that thought, uh, you retreated to your own room with a spring in your step. Oh, that one was actually that one went by quite quick, I think. Oh wait, no, we're we're almost an hour in. God damn. God fucking damn, we're almost an hour in. We can fit another one in. Oh, we're gonna see the, the full body shot. Uh, come back before you get stuck, all right, sport? Oh wait, maybe not. The familiar voice drifted across the street. Oh, maybe not. Never mind. And drew your attention away from the snail you'd been watching it and then just clearly got your pavement. Why would I? Okay. Oh, never mind. He's here. There we go. Looking fine as ever. Uh, Cove waited in front of his dad, pushing his green, uh, uh, his green hair back off his face from where the breeze was blowing it over his glasses. <laughs> Blue! <laughs> Blue! Oh, it's cutting off the fucking text. Is that just me? It looks like it's cutting off the text. Uh, let me try and find where the... Wait, keep barking. <laughs> keep barking, hold on. I'm trying to find the... Uh... I'm trying to find the uh... chat. Golden chat, there we go. There we go. I shouldn't cut off your messages anymore. There we go, there we go. Uh, he looked up to be only paying uh, only a mild amount of attention as he was being handed a few slips of green paper. Uh, it reminded you of when you first met Mr. Holden, although he's probably not paying, uh, paying Cove to be friends with himself. <laughs> Cove's dad seemed to feel your gaze somehow, or maybe you made a noise, because a second later his eyes were on you. He waved, uh, he waved you over with a smile. He looked happy to see you, but you still felt a little weird for getting caught. Uh, you've got to learn how to be more sneaky. <laughs> Blue! <laughs> Look at My whole chat is just you barking, bro. God damn. Um... He looked happy to see you, but you still felt a little weird for getting caught. You've got to learn- Oh, wait, I've already read that. Uh, you brush your hands together um, to breathe them of sand, then jogged over to join the two, smiling at Co first, and then his dad. Maraki, hi. How's it going? How's it going? Uh, good to see you again. What if Sam and I are you up today, Maraki? I <laughs> like his eyes on me. Well, he's winking now. He's winking a little. He's winking a little. Uh, nothing. You told uh, you told the pavement uh, in front of you. It would be nice to tell them about the snail you found, but you didn't know if they liked snails. After you finished answering uh, the question, Mr. Holden's attention returned to Cove, who was preoccupied with folding the bills he had uh, into a tiny rectangle. Sounds fun. It does. You weren't sure about that. You know, Co Co Coast was about to hit uh, hit the stores by the beach. Why don't you go with him? He gave a ready nod, turning to, turning to squint in the direction of the stores, like he could see the goods uh, they had. Had to offer all the way from where you stood. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. I don't mind. Great, I'm sure you guys will have loads of fun. I love shopping. I love shopping, especially like in a place that I don't really go. Like shopping in Brighton was, especially in the lanes. Oh my god. Um, Mr. Harden reached into his pocket and pulled out a leather wallet filled with money. He found it odd since your mum's only ever seemed to have uh, cars in this. Here. Oh! He leaned in a- He's got that bag! He leaned in a- uh, a pass- uh, pass a crisp ten to Cove, giving him a wink and a whisper. <laughs> Blue. 
Uh, get something for your friend, too. Sure. That's my boy. Coast Dad ruffled his son's hair as he, as he was straightening back up. The bill in his hand still still held out, with, uh, out towards the green-haired boy. Take care. Coe accepted the bill after a second and slipped it back into his pocket. Then with one last nod to his dad, he turned and started walking. Yes, Rocky, sorry. There is no issue. Don't worry. There is no issue. I'm just gobsmacked. <laughs> you follow after him, intrigued at the possibilities this outing might bring. Go straight towards the gentle tide creeping up on the sun and you fell into place beside him. It was a nice day. The sun was shining and there wasn't many clouds in the sky. But the wind coming off the ocean kept it from being too hot. You took in a deep breath, enjoying the scent of salt and ocean air. When you looked at Cove, he was dragging his feet through the sand a little, and you slowed down to wait for him. Where did Mr. Holden go? He went back home. He went back home. He, he left us to our own devices. His eyes searched the ground intently. Are you looking for snails? <laughs> Are you looking for shells? What is it? You didn't feel the need to ask why. You're looking for shells. Cove uh, startled a little at the sound of your voice and mumbled a sort of. <laughs> If you see any, you can let me know. You could manage that. You dropped your view to the sand, walking carefully so you didn't step on any. You were good at finding shells. You had a lot of them at home and always found new ones whenever you visited the beach. The comforting sound of the waves filled the silence with pleasant white noise and you played a little game with yourself as you walked along, getting as close to the water as possible without getting wet. It resulted in you having to run up the sand quickly when a ra wave, of wave rushed in more than a few times. And although Cove threw a few glasses your way, he didn't say a word. You didn't either. What did you want to uh, go to the shops for? What do you usually do on the beach? Shops. I need a new sand pail. The fuck is a sand pail? Yeah, what happened to your old one? Oh, is that like the shovel? I don't know. Uh, Cove narrated his eyes, seeming to think deeply for a second. Wow. It disappeared. What? Really? Cove took his head down, losing his fingers behind his back. It didn't seem like he was going to continue, so he nudged his arm. How did that happen? Well, Cove opened his mouth and then shut it again, considering. Hmm. I took it to the beach one day. Uh-huh. When I got home, it wasn't there. You left it there? No, but it wasn't at the beach when I went back. Then you lost it. It disappeared. No. What about you? What do you, what do, you do out here? Uh, I don't come to the beach a lot. I like swimming. I like looking at fish. I like to build sandcastles. Nothing. I don't go to the beach a lot. So I'm going to say that. You like the beach fine, but you rarely went down without Lizzie. Today had been a special occasion. Why? I don't know. I guess I'm doing other stuff. Coasting. Well, I actually do know. I hate the sand. I hate the sand. Uh, Coast seemed personally offended by this revelation. <laughs> The beach must have mattered a lot to him, but that makes sense. His name is Cove, after all. Once you've reached the shopping area, the noise level grew exponentially. No longer just waves and footsteps, but the chatter of people enjoying the lovely summer day, the, the call of birds trying to find bits of food left behind, and lots of salespeople trying to get attention. I like to go to the beach when, <laughs> with Mr. Holden. You do that, King. You do that. Uh, you sniff the air as you, as you walk beside Cove. You can still smell the ocean, but there was other scents now. Um, pizza, pretzels, hot donuts. Oh my god, the smell of hot donuts. I love that shit. I love that shit. Uh, it's nice. It's not very nice. It's alright. It's nice. The energy surrounding the area seemed to fill you. There was a bounce in your step as you began looking at, the, uh, at all the familiar sights. There were so many things to do, you didn't know where to begin. You looked at Cove, hoping he was just excited as you were. Cove was glancing from one side of the street to the other with a look of aquamarine eyes, uh, with a look in his aquamarine eyes that he couldn't quite work out. Um. What's that? Cove pointed into a large crowd of people gathered uh, near a few tables with large colorful umbrellas moving from their middles. Cove, where is your father at home, Blue? He's at home! Oh, it's working. I don't know. Uh, you couldn't see past the adults who were blocking the way, but you knew they uh, must be worth seeing. Without another word, the two of you hurried over to see what all the commotion was about. Feast your eyes on the amazing Alexander! <laughs> in the centre of the crowd was a man with a tall hat and a funny green coat uh, that had three long tails. Okay. There was a little table next to him with a cloth hanging over the, uh, it that read The Amazing Alexander in glittery golden script. Why tell people his name if it isn't already on the sign? Cove home with an understanding, then turned to walk away just as the amazing Alexander began shuffling a deck of cars. You bit your lip, reluctantly starting to follow after Cove again. Okay. 
<laughs> you continued looking over your shoulder, however, uh, wanting to see as much as you could before you got too far away. Hey! Not watching where you, uh, where you were going proved a bad idea as you bumped right into Cone. Oh, sorry. Did you want to stay or something? Uh, if that's okay. He briefly lifted his arms uh, up off his sides before returning them to place. You could have said so. With that, it began. The magic man pulled one card out of the deck, showing it, uh, showing it to curious out onlookers. It was a four of diamonds. Watch closely. <laughs> I don't know why I've given him that boy. You did, squeezing through uh, through a few of the adult onlookers to get a better view. Suddenly, the man snapped his fingers, and the card just disappeared. Whoa! <laughs> Cope's just not a fucking, he's not a mute. The amazing Alexander who had un earned his title turned his head and looked directly at you. He reached out with the, I thought that, I don't know why I thought that said he reached out with a knife. <laughs> he reached out with a kind smile. What's that behind your ear? Nothing. Tell me! You backed away. Um, I, realistically in this situation, I, I probably, I, I probably say nothing. Um, like not nothing like I genuinely just be like um, I just I wouldn't say anything uh, nothing it was true you didn't keep anything there he smelled like popcorn and candy when he stepped closer and you wrinkled your nose in confusion as you watched him my phone died <laughs> bro it's okay <laughs> Fucking hell. I need to um, mod your ult. I need to mod your um, ult account just in case your, your phone dies. Uh, just blue ult. There we go. I think it's done it. I think it's done it. Uh, you felt a tug and then he pulled the four of diamonds out from behind your ear. Uh, whoa. You knew that it couldn't really have come from your ear, but you still didn't get how he'd done it. There's a light applause from the crowd, and the man gave a deep bow. This is for you. The magic, uh, the, uh, the magician plucked a pair of balloons from a clump of them tied down to his table. Both were in the shape of a dolphin instead of being a normal circle. Uh, uh, and one for your friend too. Thank you for being my assistant. Wow. Uh, now you are really, uh, really grateful he cho chose you. After that, he, he went to someone else in the crowd. Pick a card, any card. <laughs> My uncle does that every time he visits. Not the balloons, the stuff with the cards. Co spoke, spoke plainly while reaching over to take the dolphin that he had been designated that had been designated for him. Maybe it wasn't so special. Kobe's just ruining the fun. At least you had a fun time. You wondered if Co's family, uh, whole family, was magic. <laughs> if so, he was lucky. <laughs> the crowd started to clear some, uh, uh, and you noticed to the side that there was a whole rack of brightly coloured kaleidoscopes on display i was like what the fuck does that say you picked up a kaleidoscope picked up a rubik's cube you picked up a magic eight ball you walked past the toys yes cobra a magic magic i would in this situation i pick up the eight ball i just shake it oh you shifted your your balloon string to the other hand so you could hold it up in front of you then you thought of the question in your mind shaking the ball and hearing some kind of liquid slosh around inside it when you had given it, uh, it a good shake, you held it upright, waiting for the answer to appear. Concentrate and ask again. You wrinkled your nose and set the magic able back on the rack. It wasn't the answer you were hoping for. You fall over around to the other side of the stall. He went under the awning, careful of his own floating dolphin, and you joined him. Did you have places like this in your old town? Are you having fun? I don't really like it here, you said nothing. Are you having fun? He nodded and you smiled back at him, happy to hear it. When Cove moved towards some of the stores nearby, you followed beside him. Yo! Look at the fucking dolphin and sharks! I want one of these! Uh, while Cove looked at the sand, sand pails, uh, you were drawn to a table of colorful keychains uh, laid out on it. They were sewn in the sh uh, shape of sea creatures, and there was a plaque that read, Handmade, standing proudly in front. There were lots of different types. You saw a dolphin, a shark, a crab, a turtle. Uh, shark. Uh, yeah, we we like the shark. We like the shark. Uh, your hand stopped on the shark. A devious smile, uh, smirk filled with with sharp teeth on his face. You weren't supposed to go near sharks in real life, but there was something about this shark that you liked, and the fabric on his back was soft when you picked it up. You were instantly in it, uh, enamored. 
Uh, check in the price though, your, your heart fell, your heart fell six dollars. You didn't know much about money, but you thought that was a lot to spend on one thing. For a little plushie, I'd say six dollars is quite a lot. Well, for me, six quid for a fucking little shark plushie. No. Oh, that's just because I fucking hate spending money. Uh, you've only had more than a five dollar bill to your name. Hello? Is that what you want? Huh? Oh. It's six dollars. I didn't bring any money. Right. It's fine. Really? Really? Are you sure? Hooray! You don't have to. Uh, I don't want you to get it for me. Call the shop, Barry. That is- so oh my god, you almost just scared me. Basically, we- me, um, and my old best friend, who I don't fucking talk to anymore, but me and my old best friend and, um, uh, my mum and dad went to Lanzarote back in, like, 2019, I think. Um, and we- we found this, like, little stall that had, like, little puppet things, like, little silicone puppets, and we bought a shark one. And it is the most fun that I've had with something like so stupid like that. Because you literally had it on your hand and you go like that. And I just go wah 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 all the fucking time. To the point where my dad took it and put it on his head. He like wrapped it around his head. And like he'd breathe in so that the mouth would like go like that on his fucking head. It was so fucking funny. It was so fucking funny. But we called, we called the shark uh, Gary. So that was very scary how you got Barry. All right, that, that scared me. That scared me. Uh, <laughs> that scared me how close you got. Uh, I don't want you to get it for me. Uh, are you sure? Kurf took the keychain from your hands uh, and that was that. He was holding a small yellow bucket for himself too. Oh, it was a book here. Okay. Uh, uh, I was always going to get you something. I already got the money for it. You're a little nervous, but happy with your purchase nonetheless. Uh, it was nice of, of Ko's dad to let Ko buy something for you too. After Ko paid, the two of you stepped outside the store by, uh, side by side, your balloon dolphins knocking together and smiling around in the air. You watched Ko hold up his new pail to his face, examining it thoroughly. Hey Ko, yeah? Uh, does your dad always give out money like that? Thanks for getting me it, nothing. Uh, I'm just too good, for real, for real. For real, for real. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say thank you. It's alright. It wasn't clear if he, he really knew how much you appreciated it. Um, what? You were going to thank him for the keychain, but said you shook your head smiling. I already thanked him. Okay. Kurt raised an eyebrow, but didn't push the issue. Kurt looked further down the street, where, where different food carts were lined up. He rested his uh, non casted arm over his stomach, uh, and just, just as he did yours, let out a light growl. Wait, he let- Oh, his stomach! I was like, why is he growling? <laughs> you hadn't eaten since breakfast, and after all of this wandering around, you were definitely ready for some lunch. Let's get some food. Yeah. You two wandered around- Wait, I thought you only had ten fucking dollars. Okay, you know what, it's fine. You two wandered around uh, a short while, uh, looking at all the d d delis delicious that were available. Everything looked delicious, and as, uh, as the different smells, both sweet and salty, wafted over you, your stomach growled even louder. After passing up hot dogs, snow cones, ice cream, and pizza, you both agreed on pre- No! Give me pizza! What? Coke got something sweet and cinnamon, and you got a plate. I don't- I've never tried a pretzel. Got one with cheese, got one with sprinkles, got one with chop. Sure. You licked your lips, uh, you licked your lips hungrily. As the vendor handled your pretzel over, ready to take a big bite. Uh, it had tiny marshmallows on it and it was dripping with chocolate, just how you liked it. I mean, I've never tried one. Your mums didn't like you to eat too much sugar, but this was a special occasion. You found an empty table close enough to the beach that, uh, that the grit of the sand made terrible noises when you dragged the chairs uh, out to sit down. These balloons are going to make it hard to eat. Kurt placed his bucket on the table as he stared, uh, stared at his still balled up hand that was wrapped around the string. You opened your mouth to agree before an idea hit you. I know. After carefully placing your pretzel somewhere, it wouldn't get, uh, get sandy. You took the balloon dolphin out, uh, out of Ko's hand and tied it in a delicate bow around his wrist. Oh. oh. Ko bounced his arm up and down in place, testing the stability of your knot. After watching his balloon jostle around but remain attached, he smiled satisfied. Could you help me too? I can't tie it on my own wrist. Oh, 
I could definitely fucking do it myself. Shut up. I could definitely do that myself. Uh, he repeated the ritual. Coach struggled somewhat with the cast restricting. Um, his fingers on one hand uh, and a string already tangled around the other. Okay. Mm, got it. The two of you spent a moment admiring your hand handiwork. Both hands now free to allow easy munching on your pretzels. You bit into uh, the dummy treat, sa savouring the taste of your... Uh, on Oh, ah! Saving the taste on your tongue with a smile as you looked out over the ocean. After a time, after a time, you finished your pretzel. You were dumb, d dumb before Cove. It was boring not having anything to do. You pulled on the string of your balloon to bring it down to your level. Then you held the dolphin in your hands, manipulating it to make it look like it was jumping through the air. You turned, the, uh, turned to face towards the beach. It almost looked like it was swimming in the waves like a real dolphin. A laugh came from your side. When you glanced back at Cove, he had the left remaining parts of his pretzel on the wrapper and he was gripping his dolphin too. My, mine's name is Merriweather. He's the Prince of Dolphins. His name, mine's name, my, 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 my name, mine's name <laughs> is Splash. They star in movies. Cherry, she's actually an alien. Sam, uh, they're just a regular dolphin. <laughs> I love that. I love that. What, what, what should we choose? What should we choose, chat? What do you reckon? I mean, we've got someone in our chat called Jerry. Um. Um. I'm not fucking sure. Merryweather's a fucking cool name. Sam, just because it's a regular dolphin. No. Um, cherry. We'll go with Cherry. Uh, when no one was looking, she transforms back into a, a true alien self. She has purple skin and ten eyes. Isn't that like a fucking kraken or some shit? You sighed, wishing you could meet a real life alien. <laughs> What's yours? Co considered this question, placing the balloon against the table and resting his free arm across the ink in contemplation it's with a loud pop no <laughs> no that is so sad no <laughs> don't make us funny it's a ribbon no oh no for a second all Coke did was gape in shock like you then his cheeks puffed up squinting his eyes and you saw tears start to close and that's so sad <laughs> that is so <laughs> Rocky, it you made a ch <laughs> you offered to find Alexander. Who? Oh fucking the magician guy. Hold on, let me sort my bangs out. Hello? There we go. You offered to give Cove your balloon. He didn't say anything. He would be alright. I'd give him my balloon. <laughs> You looked at Cove, then uh, pull, uh, up, uh, then up to your balloon, bobbing gently in the air above you. You can have mine. That was better than to let him cry more. Cove sniffled, glancing up at the balloon, then back at you. <laughs> Yo, thank you for the hydrate. You smell. Oh, why, why are you keep insulting me? <sighs> uh, uh, <laughs> no, it's yours. I don't want to take it from you. It's okay, really. Kurt shook his head, even though it wasn't your fault. By the way, Luffy, I don't know if you missed it, but his fucking dolphin balloon popped, and I don't know why I found it so funny. He's crying, but I just found it really amusing. Um, <laughs> he was about to name it and everything. He was about to name his dolphin balloon, and then it popped. I just finished my homework. Congratulations. Weren't you behind? Did you, like, finish it all? I'm very proud. Uh, Ko shook his head, even though it wasn't uh, wasn't your fault. You felt bad still. Also, Ko bought us a little shark plushie, and I adore it with all my heart. And we've we've agreed to call him Barry slash Gary. Uh, <laughs> uh, still, the offer seemed to lift Ko's spirit, and that was good. Uh, the passing of Ko's balloon was the last major event of your adventure, so I had like twelve plus hours worth of Danish homework, which is due at like midnight. 12 plus hours worth the way i would avoid doing it the way i'd avoid doing it uh in the end the two of you headed back late that afternoon 
You separated on the beach and while Coke went straight home with his brand new sun, sun pill in his hand, you decided to sit for a while. You watched the waves and the sunset fiddling with your new keychain. This is this is the thing that you bought us. Uh, and I was going through it and I realised that one of the parts that was supposed to take eight hours is something I cannot do because I don't have the fucking book. Well then, you don't have to do it because it's not your fault. That is your teacher's fault. Boom! You don't have to do eight hours of work. That's how I'd see it. Another day, another day. Uh, another summer day. I mean, you might have to do it later on, but it's fine. So I was like, sorry, can't do it. Not sorry. Yeah, exactly. You can't do it if you don't have the book. What are they going to do? Tell you to buy it? Tell you to buy the book? No, we're in a crisis. Uh, another summer day was drawing to, to a close. It had been a good one, except for this a sad final note. <gasps> and then the summer ended? Yes. We are ending stream though soon. But summer ends now. Summer ends now. So I think we, we go into the next phase. I think we age up a bit. I think we age up a year or like a few years. I'm not sure. Uh, like, what are they going to do? Uh, ask me to go get it at the library at 9.30pm on a Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'll never get tired of that for you. You sit beside your mums, Lizzie and Cove. Uh, 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 Lizzie and Cove? Uh, Lizzie and Cove, as the five of you watch the sun dip into the ocean somewhere far, far away. You'd like to ima- Wait, Shrek reference? Uh, you like to imagine it cooling off in the water, resting itself before getting ready to shine brightly again tomorrow. That was a fun day. I didn't know they had uh, had magicians on the shopping street now. Neither did I. Oh no, we are so dull. Let's get out more. <laughs> they didn't do real magic, mom. <laughs> How did you figure that one out? Because yeah. I know, that's not what real magic looks like. Oh, <laughs> Imagine. Oh, Lizzie dear, there's all kinds of magic in the world. Oh, <laughs> Lizzie gave Mum a suspicious look, but didn't it uh, didn't dispute the claim. I looked over at Cove, who <laughs> I've gone lightheaded saying that, <laughs> uh, who hadn't said a word since she started at home. Uh, he didn't look upset though, just content. You were aware he still hadn't quite warmed up to your parents. Well, we could sit out here all night. Time to hurry home and get cooking. Who's helping with dinner? Lizzie immediately let out a groan. Ah. Mum, summer's almost over. The protest was obvious. You could practically see a school, uh, see school on the horizon. <coughs> uh, no, you certainly did not want to spend your last bits of freedom cooking dinner. You could, do, you could do that on any any other day. School grows very true. School is shit. Please come and just play a little longer. We have to keep playing before it's too late. It is almost over. Uh, you put in your best puppy dog eyes. Lizzie may not want to, but you plan on going home. No. Uh, who needs school when you have Minecraft? That is true. That is true. Uh, please can we just play a little longer? Let's uh, uh, Mum looked uh, looked down at you both with a sigh, and you, uh, and you clasped your hands together to give give your plea to some extra appeal. We'll help with dinner tomorrow. You immediately nodded in agreement with uh, the very clever offer, shifting closer to Lizzie since your parents couldn't uh, can't possibly resist the power of you two combined. All right, calm down. <laughs> Some will have homework and reading to do. We can't do work now too. Lucy made her case and then stomped her foot into the ground. You mimicked her, feeling that would add something to the argument. Well, no, no. oh, come on, Pam. Okay, we've got Pam and, I can't remember what the, Navali? Navali? Uh, I can help you with dinner. Mum leaned in for a hug and you knew you, were, you that you were very close to victory. Okay. All right. But as soon as dinner's ready, you, you lot are coming inside, understood? Yes, mum. Yes, ma. Uh, Cove, dear, you're welcome to join us as well. You sent him a small smile, which he returned. Cove gave a non-committal shrug to your mum, which uh, which you took as an agreement. <laughs> so much to do, so little time. Hmm, maybe I could still get the seashell bracelet at times and trinkets. Uh, or, uh, or maybe I could play, uh, maybe the playground. Or well, the fireflies would probably be coming out, right? Hmm. Uh, don't I get a say in this? You certainly made your own plans. We can't go too far. I'm going home. <laughs> Imagine after all of that pleading, we go home. <laughs> like, uh, you certainly made your own plans. Don't I get a say? Lizzie looked over at you, narrowing her eyes like she was very seriously contemplating the answer to that question. Home, home. Home, home. A strong gust of wind made you shiver. Lizzie huffed as she wrapped her arms around herself. 
Doesn't the wind know that summer's not over yet? Uh, that's all Lizzie said before, abruptly turning on her heel and heading off the, uh, the direction your mother's had gone. Where are you going? I'm going to my room. I have lots to plan if I want to make the most of tomorrow. You thought this was over, looking o o off towards the water again. Lizzie didn't wait, and before long she was disappearing off, the off down the road. Meanwhile, Cove was going off in the opposite direction, heading for the beach. Steady with Cove. Cove gave you a smile that uh, you couldn't help but return. Oh. Cool. He made a little gesture that you uh, that you interpreted as follow me, and then started heading heading to the waves. Cove knelt down, picking up something you quickly identified as a smooth rock. You reared his arm back, then tossed it out into the water. You were impressed over how far he got it to go. It sailed, it sailed way out. Oh, we're skipping stones. Rock. Eat rock. <laughs> Eat the rock. It was a good toss. That was pretty neat. It wasn't a long throw, but you didn't really care, uh, care to, to, to try for that. Uh, the rock sunk, kind of. Uh, it's a good toss. Om nom nom nom. You can't skip rocks into the ocean. What are you doing? Look for your own rock. I'm actually really bad at skipping stones. <laughs> I can't get the grist from it. I literally cannot get the grist from it. Sun to join Cove, you searched nearby for any rocks or shells that you could throw to. You found a shell that would suit your purposes, a smile growing as you as you tossed it as hard as you could. It landed with a wet sounding thunk a few feet away as you slipped uh, slipped down into the water. I'll teach you when we meet up one day. <laughs> oh, there's loads of stones. There's loads of rocks on the fucking Brighton beach. And I believe, like, there's a vlog where, like, Tommy and... Is it Tubbo or Phil? It might be Tommy and Phil. Are, like, skipping stones at the Brighton Beach as the sunset goes. Oh, my God. It's all I want. It's all I want. It's all I want. Uh, when you looked over at Kofi, he didn't seem to notice that his throw had been more impressive. Kofi was looking down at his cast, uh, scratching idly at the pink surface, even though you were you were pretty sure he couldn't feel it. His brows were furrowed, and there was a frown on his face. It's not it's not fair. Uh, I've had to wear this cast for ages. I can't even swim. When do you get it off? How did you get it? I want to ask both. I want to ask both. I want to ask both. When did you get it off? Coach shrugged and didn't say anything. Ah! Should I ask you a question? For a second, uh, you thought maybe you didn't know. But finally he sighed. A few weeks. Oh! So I think maybe, maybe by the next time that we... Next summer, we'll, he'll have it off. That's not very long at all. That is a while away. You didn't think a few weeks was that bad. His cousin would be off in, uh, most of uh, his time at school. He'd probably be able to play normally at recess. And he sometimes got to go swimming during the school year, so maybe he could make up for uh, for lost time then. Uh, Cove let out a huff, popping down onto the sand. I can't believe summer's almost over. He sat down next to him and nodded in agreement, regardless of the sudden topic change. I don't want to go to school. I mean, I would. I don't want to go to a new school. I think it'll be the same school as you and Lizzie. My dad says something about that. Cool, you're going to like it. Everyone's super nice. <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. Uh, you only ever uh, been to one school, but you were sure that his old school couldn't have been that much better. Then again, he didn't have to make new friends uh, and meet new teachers. And it, it, He did have to make new friends and meet new teachers. It could be kind of scary. Ko shook his head, then wrapped his good arm around his knees and drew, drew them to his chest. Damn, I can't believe summer's almost over. <sighs> God damn. God damn. Uh, you heard a sniffling sound when, when you took a good look at his face. You realized that his eyes were- Why are you always crying? Sorry. He's always crying. I want to go home. You never uh, had to move before, but you thought uh, you could understand. If you had to go to a new school all of a sudden with all new people, you'd probably be dreading it too. I'm always also always crying. <laughs> it do be like that, but this motherfucker, every time he's been on screen with me, he's cried at some point. Even though you sort of maybe understood, you still weren't sure how to help. So much time, so few cheese puffs. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Cove gave his head a small shake. No, I want to go back home. Right, Cove wants to go back to his old home. The one, uh, the one that sat waiting someplace far from here. The one he would bring up whenever he felt sad. Uh, uh, it had been a while since he had moved in, but he didn't seem to feel any better about being here. Settle back down into the sand, trying to consider what to do. Do you hate it here? This can be your home. It'll be alright. Do you hate it here? Uh, then he shook his head. You felt a rush of relief uh, fill you. Uh, you liked having Cove here. It would be sad if he, he'd been miserable the whole time. 
You're not going to leave, right? You'll still be around. The question was still surprising. Of course. Your parents would have mentioned if you were going to move or something, right? Uh, dude, my fucking stinky brother is still sitting down in the living room. Bro hasn't left the couch in hours. <laughs> that is kind of a me move, not gonna lie. I just do that in my bedroom instead. Uh, after a second, Cove gave a little nod. Once I get my cast off, we could go swimming. You were fine with him changing the subject again. Okay. You had, to, uh, you had to say swimming did sound fun, even though it was already getting chilly out. Cove smiled and looked back, at down, uh, back, back to the waves. My dad keeps saying I'll get used to everything eventually. That I'd feel better then. It used to make me angry. I didn't want to get used to everything. He spared a glance over at Cove and saw the anger slipped off his face in favour of something almost puzzled. Push him into the water and then run away giggling like an evil genius. <laughs> or like a gremlin. I'll be a gremlin. I'm not an evil genius. I'm an evil little gremlin, man. Uh, but maybe that would be okay after, uh, after all. As long as I really do feel better. I can't see it. You could remember a long time ago when you first started going to school. You had absolutely not been okay with the idea of being, being away from your parents for most of the day. To listen to strangers to tell you what to do and sit with kids you never met before. Things changing is hard. Have you got the tism? <laughs> Maybe he's got the tism. Maybe that's why he's like upset about the change so much. Uh, you held his hand. I can. Wait, I can? I'll make sure you do. Um, I feel like holding his hand. He might be like, what the fuck are you doing? You got the tism. I'll make sure you do. <laughs> tism is like a raid command that you've just done. Uh, Cove laughed just a little, but you grinned, proud that you were able to drag one out of him when he was obviously feeling down. Even still, a second later, his eyes got a little misty once more. You got the feeling that there were different tears than the ones, we hit, uh, ones from before, though. I hope next summer I'll surf and go exploring and everything will feel like it's supposed to again. You gave a little nod, resting your head, uh, head on your own knees. The two of you sat quietly, just taking in the sounds of the waves. There were different tism than before. There were different tism than before. You hoped that Cove, uh, Cove would be able to accept this place uh, as his new home. Um, you definitely tried to, to you definitely tried to help in what ways you could. There were so many wonderful things uh, things here Cove probably haven't seen yet. Lost in thought, you started a bit. Uh, you start you started a bit when you heard a faint, familiar sound. The sound of your mum shouting your name. Like tism. Uh, <laughs> you looked over your shoulder, realizing it was probably time for dinner. Time had gone by really fast. You suddenly dusted the sound off yourself. My mum's calling. It's time for dinner. You should come. Cove looked up at you, expression screaming reluctance. Yeah, ultimately. Okay. When you smiled, Cove returned one with, one with his own. Meraki, thanks. thanks. It was nice when you were right then. But the two of you couldn't stay, uh, stay in your own little world any longer. You were being called forward. So the both of you ran off towards your house, leaving the waves and summer behind. <gasps> oh my god, Heartstopper? <laughs> Bro, that was like a hot stopper moment. In between. How old are we though? Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, oh shit. Uh, yeah, has my change, my hair changed any fucking much? I guess my hair's gotten like, no, no, uh, oh my, Jesus. Uh, is there like a brown option? My hair's more brown now. Uh, what the fuck? Okay. Cool. Cool. Hair front. Oh. Can I like get longer bangs two-tone i don't want two-tone i don't want two-tone uh thick curled curled braided side swept bangs well i guess i kind of do swept bangs a little bit curl smiled meraki tism <laughs> um i do sweep my curls uh, curls i do sweep my bangs out of my face a lot more because they're getting long Choppy, curled, flowy, short. 
I want us to have like different phases, you know what I mean? I want us to have like little little different phases. Um Sure, we'll do something like that. We'll do something like that. No, no, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Oh! Uh bowl cut. That is kind of what my hair's gonna look like at some point. Uh I think that's what we had before, but fuck it. Birthmarks, uh, this is all the fucking same, I think. Earrings, lips, yeah. Uh, bracelets, necklaces, yeah, these are these are all the same. Uh, these are all the same, yeah. Uh, cool. Wait, I'm done. Oh, there we go. Cool. Uh, my feelings for Cove. Um, so at the moment, I'm nervous but fond. Um, i say that I'm quite, like, relaxed with him, you know? What's direct? Relaxed, I'd say. I wouldn't say I've got a crush on him yet. Um, he's a literal child, so no, I don't really have a crush on him. Uh, indifferent. God damn. Right, ready. Uh, relaxed fondness. You won't be able to change it again? Yes. Customized cove? Wait, what? We get to- Oh my god, my fucking thumb. We get to- We get to customize Cove. Cove customization. Personality? Um. We'll click both. Okay. So, we're probably like- teenagers now oh my god he's got a scar on his fucking arm from where his cast was what the fuck happened we can customize this system. what the fuck happened to his arm i like his necklace too okay so i pro i think we're like i'm gonna guess probably like 14 15 at this point he looks like it you know he looks like it so i'm gonna fucking hell my bangs look awful ignore this hair Oh, I like that. Oh, we only have... I like this one. He did have glasses. Um, we'll keep the glasses on. Uh, shirt. Oh, my God. Okay, we, we don't have many options. <laughs> we don't have many options. Oh. Oh, my God, the matching do that matches your necklace left wrist <gasps> no keep the bracelet on right wrist <gasps> i like that oh i like that one too i like that one yes all of them all of the all of the stuff yes 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 <gasps> pjs yo yes north south east west never eat shredded wheat you know how it is uh, hair. Uh, we'll take the glasses off. You know, he's sleeping. Uh, what is this? Jacket. It's just, okay. Is that Adidas? <laughs> okay. I like this one. Uh, there we go. Cool! Done. Okay, personality. What is this? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. I don't really want to change this. I feel like I'd be cheating if I was to change that. Um we'll get through this first part. We'll get we'll get it started and we'll get to like to the scene and then I'm gonna end stream. Uh August ended, September began. Wake me up when September ends. Uh it was time to go back to school. Lizzie groaned and complained the entire first week. She hated going to classes. Still, there was a lot of interesting things to do that couldn't be done anywhere else. He weren't sure how Cove felt about it. He was enrolled that year. That was uh, that was like a sign Cove would be uh, staying in Sunset Bird for a while. At school, he was alright, but kept his distance from other kids, from what you saw anyway. Uh, do you want a Minecraft as a stream? I cannot! I cannot. 
Um, I did say at the, at the beginning of stream that I can't play for as long, hence why I'm ending stream earlier. Because um, my father is wanting to watch a movie with me. And it's two hours long, so that's why I'm ending stream at like 9. So that we don't finish the film at like 2am. <laughs> uh, whenever he could. Um, but I will, I will be on tomorrow at some point. Um, and obviously I'm not streaming tomorrow. So... But I've also got therapy tomorrow, so um, I'll probably come home and sleep. So I'll probably be on around like two or three, somewhere, somewhere like that. Uh, whenever he could, Co stuck around, uh, stuck to you like glue. He didn't even mind that much uh, when you did to pass time, as long as it was together. Minecraft therapy. I wish, I wish. Uh, that year, the the divorce of Co's parents was finalised. You overheard your parents talking about it, saying Co Star got full custody. Yippee! Uh, at first you worried that meant bad news. Oh wait, what? Co Same coast I got full Wait, what? It made Mr. Holland cry, apparently. No, that's a good thing, no? Then you found out he meant Cove would be... Ki oh, okay. Oh, okay. I was like, that's a good thing. Why are we, why are we thinking it's a bad? Uh, he would only stay with his mum a few weeks of the year. Cove cried too, for different reasons, you thought. Uh, it seemed like Cove and his dad might move again, but Mr. Holland decided to stay after all. Mum asked him about it once. Uh, he said he didn't want to uproot Cove's life a second time. Mr. Holden tried to get Cove to, uh, to like Sunset Birdmore. He kept encouraging his son to go out and see the place. Sometimes Mr. Holden volunteered you to spend time with Cove. He seemed very confident that uh, it was an effective strategy. Cove never talked to anyone uh, about what happened with his parents and withdrew whenever it was broke brought up. Uh, it was hard for him, yet nobody knew how to help. Eventually, Co stopped crying on his own. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't understand why I changed. Still, you worried about him. You couldn't tell, uh, you could, you could tell that he wasn't completely happy. Maybe one day you could say out loud what he felt inside. After that, it felt like things had gone back to normal. Except, uh, what was normal didn't stay the same. Years passed, and suddenly you were in middle school. You weren't a kid anymore. Okay, so yeah, you were thirteen years old. Okay, we're thirteen. Okay, that officially made you a teen. Uh, even if your sister didn't agree. Uh, I think our sister's like a few years older. But I think she'll be like 15, 16. I don't know though. The toys and the crayons I used to litter every free space in your room had been packed away somewhere, replaced by new hobbies. There were other changes too. Kurt's cast got taken off, but it was weird to see him without it initially. Underneath the pink plaster ended up being a, a long, thin scar that snaked across his forearm. Kurt's chest puffed out in pride when someone drew attention to it. Uh, he also went through a major growth spurt. He was like the tallest student in the class for two years in a row. Uh, what's that fucking like, mate? I, I, <laughs> what's that like? I don't, I've never gotten a growth spurt. A growth spurt? Growth? Yep. Kurt will probably uh, hold, hold that spot again next time. In class, people knew him for more than just being tall. He also stood out because of how well he did on tests and, and other academic situations. Over the years, he began opening up more too. You saw him talking uh, amicably with other students, uh, with, with kids or neighbours from time to time. And the uh, the only kid that came to visit the neighbourhood when you were little, Shalot, uh, well, well, yeah, what happened to Shalot? We only saw him like three times. Uh, yeah, well, he was gone. Wait, wait, and the only kid when you were little, Shalot, well, he was gone. <gasps> oh no, Shalot! He and his mum moved back, to, back back south because of her work just one year after Cove came to Sunset Bird. It had been really upsetting when he left as he was uh, inconsolable for weeks when nobody talked about Shalot anymore. It was a long time ago. He learned some heartbreaking things became less sad the further further away they were even if they had nothing... Uh, if Even if they had never gotten any better. Uh, that was sad in its own way. Uh, things at home were different too. You still lived in the same house and all that, but it wasn't how it was before. Uh, M A. Oh, Ma dyed her hair purple, wanting something new. I liked it so much she kept dyeing it. You remember calling her as a kid, but something like that seemed awkward nowadays. Well, <laughs> call me fucking stoked. Uh, you were much too old for the world. A word. Uh, Lucy felt too mature for her nickname too. Uh, she insisted on everyone calling her Elizabeth, so you did. Your mum soon uh, gave her permission to go places other than the playground and shopping street, which she took advantage of. You rarely saw her around the old neighbourhood. In fact, she hardly spent time with you the way she did before. Oh, I feel that. I feel that. 
Elizabeth has had associated more and more with girls from school who were her own age. Yeah, I feel that. Obviously, my, my brother being, like, my big brother and being, like, 10 years older than me. Like, obviously, we didn't play a lot when we were little because of, obviously, the age difference anyway. But from, from what we did play together and stuff, it just got to the point where, like, he started, like, thinking about uni. Uh, or like towards like year 11 and stuff like that and he just wouldn't play with me anymore and it made me so sad it made me so sad uh maybe the difference between 13 and 15 was greater than the difference between 8 and 10. you started befriending new people yourself like derek Surares. he didn't live in the neighborhood or go to the same school what happened was uh his co uh, his and co's dad struck up a business partnership a few months ago dude i fucking loved hanging out with my younger siblings Bro, my, my, I don't think my brother minded it, like, because obviously I was his little sister, like, he's not gonna mind it. Um, but obviously I think he just got so, like, caught up with work, like, schoolwork, and obviously he went off to uni, so he, like, moved out. I remember when I went to go visit uh, him at his, like, uni, like, place for the first time, um, after, like, so fucking long of him not being at home. And I got in the car and I fucking started bawling my eyes out because I was like, I don't want to leave my brother. I do not want to leave him. I was like, I was so fucking sad about it. Uh, what happened was his parents and co's dad struck- Oh, I've already fucking read that. Since then, Derek would pop up in the area every now and then. It seemed Mrs. Sor Sorares was happy to let Derek tag along uh, to his work if Derek had time for it. Thank you for the hydrate. Without a doubt, everyone had- uh, everything around you had changed. In small and big ways, you had to. As time went by, though, it was easy to settle in, uh, into this new normal. Then, before you knew it, school was over and summer vacation had come again. Whoa, we got a cool room. Okay, I think we're going to leave it here. It was the first day of summer vacation. The sun was hot as ever, but you were inside and away uh, from its harsh rays. I like our room. Our room looks fucking cool. God damn. I don't know what this means. Um, I'm just looking at. Whoa, we're a fucking streamer! Look at that. We really like the color blue. I think these are. This is a snorkel. Oh my god. The overflowing like washing basket. That's. I, my room is a lot messier than this though. Not gonna lie. I'd fucking die for a room like this. My fucking god. I would die. Anyways, anyways, chat. I was scared of what that was then. Um. I am going to going to go. Uh, I'm trying to save my game. Uh, there we go. Okay, did that do it? Yes. Do this. Quit. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Chat, I am going to go. What am I going to do if, if no Meraki streams? I am sorry. I am sorry. I will be back Tuesday. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, I haven't got anything planned, but uh, you'll you'll know, you'll know, you'll know. Uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I was gonna ask if anyone's live, but um, I have an in-person class Tuesday. Ah! Ah! Well, I'll be like mm. Thursday might be quite interesting. Thursday stream uh, is actually planned because um, I'm going out um, to the beach. I'm going out into town. Uh, because I need to, I need to film uh, for my final project, um, and I'm going to be with James and Em, and we're gonna like hang out and stuff like that. I think we're gonna go to the arcades a little bit once I film shit. Um, hopefully, the filming won't take as long, um, because I wanna, I wanna be able to do stuff as well. So Thursday stream might be like a little just chatting stream, and I, I can just like talk about stuff because honestly. There's so many fucking stories that I gather from just being with those fucking people for more than like an hour. <laughs> I, honestly, they're both cursed as each other. I, I'm not even joking. And I can't really say anything because I'm cursed as well with them. But hey ho. Anyways, chat. RK Pog. Yeah. 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 Anyways, thank you for joining chat. I appreciate it. As always. Um, and now I'm going to go watch Ant-Man with my dad. Goodbye. Goodbye chat, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, goodbye, goodbye chat.